Beware the foolish vanity of youth, so often blinded to the gods' own truth, presented with a future they disdain, some foolish mortals flee to ward off pain, but in the end they rush into their fate, and hasten wounds they hoped they could abate. Behold two souls whose lives were altered thus, the tale of Ficus and young Gracias. What ho, Gracias! On guard, Ficus! Ha! Hey. <laughs> Oh, well done, my friend! Brilliant oh. counter, most excellent Ficus! Oh, uh, 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 yeah. oh you win again, my friend! <laughs> well done, Ficus Deciduous and Gracias Anicus. We have finished for the day. Away with you. <laughs> well, how shall we spend the afternoon? My time is free. Excellent. Shall we hither to the city of Dolmus? I have long intended to consult the oracle thereabouts. The right to Dolmus would be most gratifying. Then let's get our steeds. Ha ha! Ah, oh, what an excellent day! Was there ever such a son? Not to my memory. And such a worthy friend to spend it with. Never before or hence. Shall we spur on our stallions? The first to Dolmus will provide the wine. Gracias, I can ill afford to lose another such wager to your excellent horsemanship. But ha ha! What? Why, you cheat! I'm after you! <laughs> well run, my friend! Ah, gracias. Will you never learn that with whatever advantage you seek to gain, you shall never best me? It is your fine example that forces me to ever excel. And now, the matter of some wine? <laughs> <laughs> The comrades cooled their horses, drank their fill, then sought and found the temple of Nyquil. There each will learn the destiny they've sought, and one will lose all in an evil plot. Why you, of course, my friend. It's you who have suggested we come. Thank you very much, my friend. Oh, great oracle! Yes? Will I be wealthy when I come of age? You will be wealthy as you've never imagined. Oh, splendid! Will I be more wealthy than my excellent friend, Gracias? No. Gracias will be more wealthy than you. I see. Then will I be handsome as I age? All the women in your land will consider you quite handsome indeed. Excellent! More handsome than my friend Gracias? No. Gracias will be more comely. Mm-hmm. Then uh, will I marry well? You will marry a princess. Oh, well then I will certainly marry better than my friend Gracias. Won't I? Nope. Afraid not. Then who will be the wisest, Gracias or I? You will certainly be the wiser of the two. Though Ficus tried to hide his angry muse, he grew quite wrathful when he heard the news. That he was wise, of course, he had no doubt. But he was sure in all ways he'd win out. He kept his counsel hidden deep within, but swore that moment that he would begin to seek the downfall of his cherished friend, that he would be the victor in the end. Ha ha! Well done, good Gracias. I'm so happy for you. And I for you, that both of us should be so fortunate. Yes, let's hurry back to Tracteon with the news. They raced like demons back to Tracteon, and Ficus was already pondering on the plan to bring about his friend's demise, but Gracias was never more the wise. That night, his evil plotting took its wing as Ficus plied Toisarius, the king. Good evening, Ficus, and how was your day? Most wonderfully spent, your majesty. 
My friend Gracias and I went to see the Oracle at Dolmas. I trust your visit was enlightening. Oh, very much so. I was told of great fortune to come. Splendid. I was told that I am to marry a princess. Is that so? You know, Ficus, my daughter Hideous is still unwed. Oh, I know, Your Majesty. And what a fine catch she would be for any man. I'm gratified to hear you say that, for I've been considering you for some time as my heir. Oh, Your Majesty, I never imagined, but alas, it cannot be. Nonsense, man. I'm a king. I can do anything I like. It pains me that I haven't told you the full of the Oracle's predictions. You see, I was told that while I would marry well, my fine friend Gracias is destined to marry better than I. Since there is no finer catch in the world than your daughter, I fear that I'm unworthy. Gracias? Why, he too is a fine match for my daughter. I'm afraid that you'll have to be satisfied as the husband of my second daughter, Tephanius. Oh, your majesty, I am speechless at your kindness. I never dreamed of such a match for one such as myself. Poisarius informed the lucky bride, and Gracias was quickly at her side, for he had worshipped Hideous from afar, her grace, her wit, her manners without par, and though her countenance was rather plain, his heart was full, he loved her for her brain. The two were wed, and Ficus moved along with plans to see his friend's charmed life go wrong. <clears throat> Good evening, Ficus, or should I say, son? Oh, good evening, your highness, or dare I say, your royal fatherliness? Uh, highness will do. Yes, your highness. Well, things have worked out splendidly, have they not? One daughter wed, one more betrothed to you. Yes, your majesty, things seem well. You have doubts? Well, your highness, Gracias would never tell you this himself. What man? Out with it. Gracias is a proud man, and he feels that you may believe he is merely marrying your daughter to get his hands on her dowry and become your heir. He has always dreamed of earning his own fortune. Mm, what a good man he is. And you, his most trusted friend, have not betrayed that trust by informing me of his fine character. Oh, perish the thought, your highness. There's no reason he should feel obligated to take any of her fortune. I trust he will make his way on his own. There remains the problem of dispensing with all that extra cash, however. Perhaps you could give it to all the poor of the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, good Ficus. I will bestow the full of both dowries on yourself, for you to do with as you see fit. Oh, your majesty. Tut, tut, I won't hear another word. I can think of no one more deserving than yourself. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. So Ficus had undone the prophecy, or so it seemed to such as he. His friend was penniless and sadly wed, with Ficus with his dowry in his stead. While Gracias was taken by surprise, he found his clever wife was money-wise. She purchased low in grain and fleece, then traded high to make their wealth increase. But Ficus had another card to play, to foil the prophecy he'd heard that day. He had to mar his comrade's handsome face to prove he was the winner in the race. How now, Gracias? All goes well, my friend. How are you and Tephanius faring? She is quite a dream to look at. Not much to talk to. When we're wed, I'm sure that will change. And you? Life is but a dream, my friend. I bless the day that I was wed to my clever and loving Hideous. Poor fool. How he deludes himself. Still, it isn't like the good old days when we were free to roam and play, is it, my friend? No. I'm afraid those days are done. But I'm well satisfied. Must they be gone forever? Can't we regain some sense of our past? I know. How about a stirring jaunt on our steeds, just like old times? I don't know. Oh, come on, my friend. I'll give you a head start. Well, 
I don't think. Ha! 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 The two took off with Mercury beside and flew across the sunny countryside. But Ficus wasn't there to win a race. He'd formed a plan to scar his friend's fine face. When Gracius was steering round a bend, Ficus' steed tripped up his lifelong friend. Gracius flew off. He fell upon his face while both the horses kept their steady pace. Poor Gracius was scratched and scraped, and where his eye had been, the socket gaped. Though sad this was, Falficus fared less well. The bump dislodged him from his horse. He fell, he tumbled through a patch of devil's thorn, and all his clothes were shredded, ripped and torn. His skin was riddled with sharpened spines. Then he was set upon by porcupines, who said to say vastly increased his ills by stabbing him with thousands of their quills. Then reaching bottom, he hit his head upon a log and sank into a stinking, fetid bog. And how is De Gracias? He has recovered nicely and saved the loss of an eye. He is back to full health. I do hope you aren't too horrified by his appearance. Oh, why no, sire. In fact, with his new eye patch, he looks rather dashing and handsome. He's no longer the pretty boy we knew, but a rough and masculine figure. Good day, my good wife. Good day, Toysarius. Well, you've recovered nicely. Too bad about Ficus. Has there been any word? None, I'm sad to say. I've gone out daily on my steed, searching, searching, but to no avail. Well, there's not to be done about it. I was going to give him your dowry, but I think you've amply proven that you can earn your own wealth. If it isn't too much a wound on your pride, I'd want you to take it now in his name. He would most certainly have wanted it this way. I am most grateful, sire, but still, let me search once more to see if he can be found. Ficus, wait! Be gone, monster, lest I smite you with my sword. No, wait! It is myself! I'm covered with thorns and quills and covered with stinking muck, but it's me, I swear it is! Away, faithful steed! It is a troll trying to fool me in my friend's name. Yeah! Yeah! So Ficus wandered back into the bog, and when he'd slogged as far as he could slog, he slumped down on a stone and made a cry. that shook him head to toe and filled the sky, and doing so unknowing caught the ear of several stinking bog trolls passing near. Ah, rich troll. Rich, 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 rich. rich, rich. rich. Must be a prince. Prince, 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 prince. Stand back. I'm not a troll. <laughs> I'm not a troll. How come you look like trolls? I fell in the mud. How come you smell like trolls? I fell in the thinking bog. How come you talk like trolls? Because I have porcupine quills in my thug. Oh. Oh. You wear your money and your thug? Money? No, they're quills and thorns. No need flood your riches, Mr. Rich Man. Oh, ow. Here, take them, take them all, I don't want them. Oh. Oh. I accept your proposal. Proposal? Daughter, you want to marry this troll? Oh, yes, Daddy, he's so handsome. Marry her, but I... I... You give her quill, you engaged. Welcome to family, my son, and when I die, all this bog be yours. Mm -hmm. No!
And that is how poor Ficus pledged his troth. His fate was as the oracle had quoth. He married into royalty that day and earned his wealth the painful trollish way. When caked with mud and slime and quilled and thorned, a lady troll believed him well adorned. Now Ficus fully opened up his eyes, and having seen his folly, he grew wise. He tried to mock the gods and ended thus the tale of Ficus and good Gracias.